Here is a factorial program we wrote last time that doesn't use recursion. But as promised, today we're going to go over how we could have written a factorial function that does use recursion. The idea of a recursive function is that it's a function that calls itself. So in the context of factorials, this means that in calculating a factorial, we're actually going to use a factorial, like in the definition. So how does that work? Well, let me just write out some math here in the Python file. Again, what is five factorial, for example? Well, that would just be five times four times three times two times one, right? That's five factorial. Now you notice that starts with five, but what comes after that? four times three times two times one, that's actually just four factorial. So to calculate five factorial, all we do is take five and multiply it by the preceding factorial, that's four factorial. And in general, to calculate any factorial, n factorial, all we have to do is take n and multiply it by n minus one factorial. The only exception is zero, because zero minus one is negative one, and we don't take factorials of negative one. So for zero, we can't use the recursive definition. In fact, zero is our initial condition. When we use recursion, the function is calling itself, and it's kind of stepping backwards from n to n minus one to n minus two, and so on. But it can't just go backwards and keep calling itself forever. At some point, it needs to arrive at an initial condition that we've specified. For the factorial function, that's zero. The factorial of zero is one. With all that in mind, it's super quick to write a recursive factorial function. No for loop necessary, this is going to be super slick. So we'll start defining the function. I'll call it r factorial for recursive factorial. Again, we'll have our parameter be n, representing any natural number that we could calculate the factorial of. Now when I'm writing a program like this, I like to start with the big pieces. So we start with our definition, and I'm just going to jump to the final return statement. What do I know the return statement of this function? function is going to have to look like. Well, what we just said was to calculate the factorial of n, we just take n and multiply it by the previous factorial. So what this function is going to return, primarily, will be n, the input parameter, multiplied by n minus 1 factorial. How do we calculate n minus 1 factorial? We just call the function. So we're going to return n times the recursive factorial with n minus one as the input. Now that's most of the work done, but we're not quite there yet. For example, if we try to call our recursive factorial function and put three in there, what we find is that we get a recursion error. The maximum recursion depth has been exceeded. That means the function just keeps on calling itself forever and it's never reaching an initial condition because we haven't specified one. So that's the thing with recursion. You gotta make sure that you specify an initial condition. It gives the function a place to stop and say, okay, we're starting here, and then for every value after this, we're basing it on previous values. Like I said, for the factorial function, our initial condition is for n equals zero. Zero factorial is one. So if n is equal to zero, we're gonna want our function to return one. That's it. Let's come back to our call of the function down here and put it in a print statement. We should get an output of six. That's three factorial. And look at that, it works. And again, we could set up a quick for loop to try printing out a handful of values from our recursive factorial function. And all of those are correct values for the factorial function. You can see how really nice and simple it is to program this function using recursion. And that's one of recursion's big advantages. Sometimes it can make for a really simple program. Of course, in this case, neither of these functions are especially complicated since factorial 
tutorial on its own is not the most complicated operation. One last thing you might do to, you know, check that the recursive function is indeed agreeing with the original function is instead of printing out the values of the recursive factorial function, what if we take those values and then subtract the original factorial function. They should be equal, right? Because they should both be correctly calculating factorials. So we should just get a bunch of zeros. We could even bump up the number of values we're gonna print out. And if we run it, we see all we get are zeros. So looks good. That's how you program the factorial function in Python recursively. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions.